Um, you are the other side of the Balkan corridor. Uh, I need to have your input, but I also need you to be fairly uh, telegraphic so that yeah. <laughs> we have enough time to move on to the future. So okay. Okay, thank you, Maria. Uh, thank you for, uh, for introducing us and thank you for the opportunity to be here. So um, we'll have, um, let's say, a short presentation uh, regarding outsources and cooperation with third countries. Since everybody of every one of us is actually doing research on subjects, but different subjects, however, we find a familiar point, let's say the illegal migration. So we will present some observations from North Macedonia uh, regarding illegal migrations uh, uh, in, uh, in this subject. So um, I will uh, try to share also a um, our presentation. Uh, please tell me if you see it. Okay, yes we do. Okay, just a second. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, um, um, my topic will be, I will be speaking about the readmission agreements between the uh, EU and uh, North Macedonia and between uh, North Macedonia and other uh, bilateral and other uh, European states. So, uh, and try to make obviously some uh, observations. So, until now, North Macedonia has signed an agreement with the EU in 2008 and has signed other several agreements with EU states, a total of 27. Apart from this, it has signed also uh, the implementation, implementation protocol with other uh, seven uh, states, uh, European states, and also there are uh, underway some negotiations about the signing of a readmission agreement with Turkey since 2010. Uh, for example, with Greece, North Macedonia has initiated an implementation protocol, but until now, um, it's, it, it is said that it is in the phase of ratification. So actually, uh, the mutual relations between both countries are uh, conducted within the legal framework of the EU readmission agreement. Um, so uh, I will uh, give you um, a quick look of the state of art of the readmission agreements that the country has signed. Um, first of all, I have to say that I have encountered many obstacles towards finding available data uh, official available data regarding the implementation and the status of implementation of the readmission agreements. For example, how many returnees of owned country nationals, how many returnees of third country nationals, or maybe how were the procedures, uh, were there any difficulties encountered, etc. As you can see, especially in particular, uh, the Macedonian government is very jealous of this data and it really gives it. So uh, basically, I um, based my research upon the only information that I can find, the European Commission progress reports, which are public. So they retrieve data from the government and they retrieve data also from the Eurostat, the EU statistical office. Um, so uh, here you will find in the table, uh, okay, the various uh, um, progress reports and the readmissions, the number of readmitted own nationals and third country nationals, as you will see, or state and stateless persons in the right uh, column. So you will see in the first readmission of own nationals that actually the readmission agreement is being implemented and is being implemented, evaluated by the commission that is being implemented quite uh, at, at, in a quite good manner, in a smoothly manner as the Commission would like to say. And it, in some years, it even reaches the return rate of 128%. This comprises also the decisions for return that were, happened on also the previous year. But you, you would find and you would see in the second column that the readmission uh, of third country nationals is stateless person, that in practice it doesn't it's exist. It's not being implemented. Uh, in fact, until 2017, it was not implemented at all. In 2018 and, and uh, 19, there are some data that there, the, lo the, uh, the number of returnees is, is, uh, is uh, low. So now what are, um, as I said earlier, what, what are the deficiencies, in my opinion, because obviously of the lack of data that, I go, that, that is available, so these are just some presumptions that I will give you, but what are the deficiencies and why doesn't this function? So first 
of all, here I um, listed uh, uh, three points that may be the most crucial about the lack of implementation of agreements. So the first thing is, the first point is the lack of signing of your admission agreements with third countries of origin or countries or transit of, of transit from where the third country nationals generally come from. So basically Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Iraq, Turkey and other. In fact, once uh, the third country nationals would be readmitted to North Macedonia in base of this agreement, because of the lack of other signed uh, uh, readmission agreements of North Macedonia with other countries, that's why North Macedonia would not be in the position to return them back home or in their transit country where they came from. Here, for example, it's another example why uh, Albania, from also from the other Western Balkan states, is the most, how to say, successful example of implementing this part of the agreement for third country nationals because it is said that Albania has signed readmission agreements with Morocco, Afghanistan, Iraq and Iraq. But also to point out another thing that I missed that this part of the agreement is not only um, implemented by North Macedonia but basically it's not implemented by all Western Balkan states. So in practice, the fear that the third country national would not have the possibility to return back to their home country of origin encumbers upon the state system in general as regards to integration, maintenance. In fact, as you know, there are the high costs uh, to be uh, implemented. So the second one is the loopholes in the Dublin system uh, in the EU, which obviously has repercussions upon third non-EU states, uh, more or less about the allocation of responsibility and pardon sharing. So specifically, we speak about the asylum system and the member states responsible for examining an asylum applications, which is based primarily on the first point of irregular entry. So from police statistics, but also from data retrieved from other international organizations, especially during the migration influx, many illegal migrants that were caught were uh, basically undocumented or even maybe had the same documents with the same identification generalities. So uh, it is obvious that once they have entered the country, they must be registered. If not, otherwise, they would not have been put through to go to Austria and Germany, for example. So hypothetically, these migrants that were registered if they would not receive or if their asylum application would be rejected in Austria and Germany, they would be uh, returned to North Macedonia. So once again, the country deals with the return back of third country nationals in their country of origin or transit. So you can see the big burden that the country has. And uh, the third point that I um, put in, that I uh, listed is the return procedures are too costly. Yeah, it, um, it's not so frequent that we see also on the news uh, how much the return cost of how much the return operation costs. But from a uh, research of Italian research in cases studied in 2015 and 16 upon the Frontex return uh, operations, it seems that one operation costs more or less 6,000 euros. Uh, this is an average. However, for example, if the returns of third country, if the returns of third country nationals were in Western Balkan states, then the cost of the operations would be 1,000 euros. But if they would be in, for example, Central African states, they will cost up to 9,000 euros. So you can see why, let's say, the, the burden of this return operation and how they, um, and how they, uh, how they enact with uh, this, uh, these readmission agreements. So as a consequence, what happens as a consequence of the non, um, let's say of this um, uh, non-respecting of the contractual obligation of this readmission agreement. So the most, the biggest consequence of all is the illicit and the tacit, tacit implicit pushbacks that happen along the Western Balkan route. Uh, we have, uh, that have been going on since, uh, since the migration crisis, let's say in 2015, 2016. So where, um, in a year, more than 10,000 migrants are being pushed back from, let's say, from Croatia to Serbia, from Croatia to Bosnia and Herzegovina, from Serbia to North Macedonia, and from North Macedonia also to Greece. And automatically, it is in breach of the European Convention on Human Rights, especially in the role reformon principle. So these are the main observations that I wanted to, to point out. Obviously, uh, the readmission agreements need to be 
not revised, but maybe find a possible solution to put in function, but also possible incentives should be put also to the states uh, that are uh, implementing let's, uh, these agreements uh, towards um, facilitating uh, the signing of the, of the agreements, readmission agreements with third countries or of origin or third countries of uh, transit. So uh, this is shortly my observations. Uh, so I will leave the floor now to my colleague Olga and Elena, who will continue the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anna. Greetings to you all. Sorry for my internet, uh, internet interruption at the beginning. Uh, my apologies for my internet uh, connection because it's not so stable. I hope you can hear me without interruptions. So I will only congratulate the uh, organizers for the online conference. You have done a tremendous job, Professor Maria. And in the short time frame that I have, I will have to skip the introduction to police, um, to the police cooperation, and I will directly present uh, the part about the crucial need of a well-organized and efficient police cooperation and access to relevant databases uh, in order to uh, prevent illegal migration. So on the first slide, you can see that the, um, if Anna can just return Sorry. the slide, thank you. Improved uh, border protection measures uh, that follow the EU-Turkey agreement that Anna uh, presented uh, led to a successful closing of the route to enhanced cooperation with the, um, with the Western Balkan partners and to decrease in the migra uh, migratory flows by the late 2016. Further work is needed today as we are wit witnessing an increase in the migra uh, migratory flows in 2019 on the routes that are leading through the West Western Balkan region which you can see from the uh, chart, um, and it's, uh, this is, in, uh, is the case for North Macedonia. For the other countries, it, the percentages are similar, that the number of illegal, uh, illegal crossings in 2019 is rapidly uh, increasing. So I know for Bosnia and Herzegovina, for a fact, there that the, the number of, uh, of um, uh, the percentage of increasing is up to 40%. We are also witnessing um, data of increased numbers of illegal migration, even in the COVID in, in uh, 20, uh, the year 2020, when the COVID-19 pan, uh, pandemic closed the borders, not only for migrants, but for the state citizens as well. So these numbers show that this, there, uh, there is a clear need to use the lessons learned and to develop uh, the developed tools, uh, to use again the developed tools, not only to improve migration management, but also to prevent the persuasive exploitation for the purpose of organized crime on the new routes through the Western Balkans region. In its 2019 country reports for Serbia and North Macedonia, the European Commission underlines that there is a lack of systematic registration of migrants that remains one of the key challenges in these countries, along with the need to ensure protective, protection sensitive profiling. This document further notes that the cases of pushbacks at the borders is continu uh, continuously reported. Uh, this means that migrants are not systematically re registered and that the identification and further referral of those in need of the protection is not functioning properly. So allow me first to emphasize the, fur of the, the few initiatives that change or will help to change the illegal migration flow for North Macedonia. First of all is the flagship initiatives that uh, that was announced in 2019 uh, in uh, 2018. Pardon. Uh, this uh, this flagship initiatives include um, one uh, has six parts, but includes um, uh, to uh, an initiative to reinforce engagement on security and migration. Uh, well, Laura already presented uh, the uh, status agreement with Frontex, and uh, I will only emphasize that that kind of status agreement is only in force with Albania, and for uh, North Macedonia and Serbia is uh, pending its penalization. Uh, for a fact, for, the, for North Macedonia, it's not um, entered into force because we have some uh, issues with the language dispute with the Bulgaria. So after the closure of this dispute, I think that the, um, this agreement will be in force. The other uh, project that was uh, uh, typical for uh, this period was the special measure project. It consisted of three parts. Uh, this project was actually a help from the International Organization for Migration and the European Commission 
to help North Macedonia to uh, somehow uh, um, succeed, su successfully exit the migration crisis. It consisted, the first part consisted of um, uh, help to the border police and the crisis management center. The second part was uh, help financial help, help for the border guard, uh, um, guards and uh, border, uh, and uh, border surveillance equi equipment. And the third part was to the Ministry of Health for the hospitals that are near the border, um, uh, near the border with Greece, uh, uh, and another uh, cooperation that I want to emphasize is the cooperation with Europol. We have already an operational uh, agreement that is functioning uh, functioning several years, and this is the only access to a database inside the European Union that North Macedonia has. So, uh, 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 thankfully, to this cooperation. Uh, Europol, uh, Europol is available to uh, give a help in training of the use of specialized equipment on the green border. Uh, also to uh, do interviews with migrants that, uh, and this provides information for the migrants' intentions, objectives, uh, modus, modus operandi of their facilitators, routes taken, and this uh, helps a lot in the uh, checking and cross-checking with the database uh, of uh, Europol. So, um, uh, but the real help is, you can, as you can see on this slide, is the uh, police cooperation that we have with uh, police officers from several EU states uh, that are uh, acting uh, on the uh, borders with um, uh, North Macedonia and Greece and uh, North Macedonia with Serbia. Uh, this cooperation was possible after the pronunciation of uh, um, status of um, a uh, state of emergency on the uh, on the both borders uh, with uh, Greece and with Serbia, and because they, we all uh, we prolonged this state of emergency for several years in a row. Uh, the uh, last uh, prolongation was uh, before five days, and will and will last thirty days again. Uh, because of this uh, uh, state of emergency, the army is the the army of the North Macedonia is keeping the border. Uh, for, for illegal uh, crossing and also the, um, uh, the uh, police officers from Slovenia, Hungary, Croatia, Slovakia, the Czech Republic uh, are patrolling the, the, the border and uh, they're um, always on the news uh, uh, because they are uh, uh, finding uh, ways to find uh, 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 minivans that uh, have migra migrants inside and uh, this this type of poli uh, police cooperation is very is very efficient um, but every mo uh, month we hear on the news about uh, these operations that are um, uh, resulted from the joint investigations under the umbrella of Europol but little do we hear uh, about the problems that North Macedonia police has during the, these operations or problems that arise after. On several occasions, Macedonian authority, um, North Macedonian authorities um, asked for access to several databases that will uh, help uh, not North Macedonia, but the EU member states to successfully carry out criminal investigations. Several documents uh, from the EU introduced the principle of, of availability as the guiding concept for law enforcement information exchange. This concept means that through the union, information that is available to law enforcement authorities in one member state should also be accessible to law enforcement authorities in another member state. But um, can this be efficient without giving limited access to third countries such as North Macedonia that are acting as a shield to the EU external borders? Government officials, such as the former Minister of Foreign Relations and the ex-president of North Macedonia stated that we have data for extremists, for radicalists, for terrorists, who are, um, uh, for persons that pursue of um, detection or investigation of serious crimes and terrorism, but we cannot put them in the database because we ha don't have uh, uh, no access to, to it. Finally, due to the large scale of arrivals since the start of the migration and refugee crisis in 2015, some member states became overwhelmed with fingerprinting all of those arriving irregularly to the EU and to the external borders. As a consequence to this, thousands of migrants have remained invisible to Europe, including thousands of unaccompanied minors, and situation that facilitates unauthorized secondary and subsequent movements and irregular stay within the EU. So 
well, we have some uh, inside information that if uh, when the, uh, the uh, our access agreement will be approved, that um, we may have uh, access to this to, to these da databases, not only Eurodoc but also PNR, uh, the passenger name record database, the Schengen information system. That are crucial databases for stopping irregular ma migration. So I will now give the floor to Elena because she will uh, wrap it with conclusions for my part as well. Greetings Thank to you, you all, Elena. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say that it's a really honor to be part of this conference. Congratulations for the organizers. Uh, I will wrap it up and also uh, give the third light of this uh, presentation that is the criminological aspects of this problematic. Uh, why are the criminological aspects and criminological overviews important at all? They are important because they are giving us relevant information about a prognosis of what might happen in the near future or maybe in some uh, longer distance of future but um, they're giving us data of uh, what are the hot points that we need to work on and uh, what are the points that we need to collaborate so that we can convey prevent and treat all these uh, my illegal migration flows first of all as um, as i said this is a criminological overview so i will uh, give a little perspective about the routes. We are uh, all familiar with the Balkan route that, is, uh, that has been used since 2015 uh, uh, from the migrants to pass our territory in order to get to the EU countries, but that is something that uh, has been changed a little bit after 2016 and all the events that were happening. In 2016, there has been EU 37, but also the closure of the uh, uh, Balkan route border. So, uh, the previous uh, path that the migrants were using, that which was uh, from Turkey, Greece, then uh, to Corridor 10 in Republic of, in our uh, country, um, in North Macedonia, they were getting to Serbia and then they were continuing their journey. But uh, since the closure, they had to find some alternative ways, which were uh, they tried to get uh, around North Macedonia and with uh, used Adriatic Road, which it was not really convenient for the migrants because of the uh, uh, ups and downs that uh, this route had. So they were again using North Macedonia, but through some illegal passing uh, uh, of our border with Greece. They were using uh, some villages east or west of uh, uh, River Varda, uh, Varda but also uh, Mountain Velasica. Uh, this stimulates uh, their illegal passing, this stimulates also their uh, uh, will to activate in some uh, crimes that were done uh, against them, but uh, also that were done from them. So they, uh, first of all, they, uh, they were smuggled, they were smuggled a lot and they are still smuggled so they can enter in our country. So they collaborate with the organized group that were organizing this uh, smuggling of migrants and a lot of migrants were found in the vehicles passenger or freight vehicles uh, also in the trains in this area. Uh, so the, the 2016 uh, changed their uh, entrance in our country. So um, we might say that uh, by uh, seeing these routes, we might uh, focus more on the points where uh, illegal migration can be occurred. Also, it is very important to see the statistics uh, of uh, the migration uh, flow. Uh, so the, this, in the past period, the mixed migration flow uh, was, um, uh, as I said, uh, really uh, uh, deeply, profoundly hit our country. In 2016, there has been uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, attempts of illegal crossing, as we can see in this statistic table. That uh, in 2017, maybe with all the measures that were taken from the EU and ourselves, they uh, dropped down, but they again, we again faced with the increase of these attempts in 2018 and 2019. Uh, so this also stimulates the cases of smuggling of migrants. We might say that this stimulates also a human trafficking cases, but we have no official data of human trafficking cases, mostly because the migrants do not want to linger for the proper amount of time on our territory, so they could collaborate with the authorities and prosecute the perpetrators. Their, uh, their only focus is to get out of our country and to continue their journey to the EU countries. 
so um, that reflects this also with the measures that were taken against the perpetrators. But also, uh, we can say that 2020 is not really promising. Uh, we can say the, the, from 2017, the night that the numbers are going uh, higher and higher, and in 2020, only in the first 10 days of June, we had registered four crimes of smuggling 186 migrants. This, uh, why are these statistics relevant? These uh, statistics are relevant because they are showing us um, some uh, frightened numbers, uh, which uh, say that uh, 2015 and 2016 can repeat and can occur again, and that we need to be uh, more focused in uh, to recognition of every um, uh, crime that can be done in this order. Also, you know, this um, you know, criminologically speaking, we must say that the, or the groups that are organizing in order to uh, uh, commit these kind of uh, crimes are um, also mixed. They have members not only for North Macedonia, but also from Greece and other EU, EU countries, but also the uh, members of the uh, countries of origin of the migrants. So in order to respond to this organization, we must also be organized in our response so that we could um, prevent, uh, suppress, and maybe uh, give the proper treatment to the, you know, to the victims. Um, on the next slide, uh, we can see uh, what are the profiles of the illegal migrants. Uh, I, will, I am talking about that their profiles because they are the same of the profiles of the uh, victims of smuggling, trafficking, and other violations of human rights, but also um, of potential victims that are not properly registered uh, at the time. Uh, when, the com when it comes to their gender, they're mostly male because the mixed migration flow is uh, combined mostly by male migrants at, uh, who are from the Afghanistan, mostly Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Iran, Iraq, and Morocco. Uh, from the detected vulnerable groups in, from the period from 2016 to 2019, there has been unaccompanied children that were uh, victims uh, or potential victims of these kind of uh, crimes and small number of pregnant women. Uh, we can go very much on about this victim, victimization and about this uh, in, uh, victim uh, aspect of all the uh, possible victims of illegal uh, of smuggling and trafficking. And we can say that the key indicators are, in theory, very much easily for recognition, but we as a country face with a problem in practice. For example, uh, our frontline responders uh, do not uh, uh, found that easily to quickly spot uh, the, uh, the victims because they are focused only on, on the order of uh, the registration in transit and not on, the, on their personal stories. So uh, they are uh, finding some smuggling migrant cases like an accident or maybe some human trafficking cases as a, a side effect of a counter smuggling cooperation. So this is a hot point, a hot point where, where we need to work more on it in the future and also to collaborate in, future, in the future. I'm open for questions for any criminological aspects. I will not uh, take a part of the time for the next participants and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, all three of you.